Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today is my full review and discussion of the Holt Bladeworks Spectre. And this is a really, really enjoyable knife, guys. And I have to say a huge thank you to my viewer, Phil, for sending this for review. It actually came straight from Holt to me and I'm gonna be sending it on to him here shortly. In fact, by the time this posts, he's already got it. So uh, thank you so much for doing that. You can follow him on Instagram at Celtic Dog. Uh, and of course, you're going to be able to see this knife and he's got a pretty nice collection. So you may want to want to check some of the other stuff out. If you're a knife guy, I don't think you'll regret giving him a follow. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of sort of my overall thoughts on this knife, at the end of my first impressions, I said this and I still stand by it. Uh, this is a real Goldilocks knife. They've really gotten a lot of things just right in terms of an EDC knife. Now, I want to be very clear about that. It is an EDC sort of gentleman style knife. Uh, it's meant to be used, it's meant to be carried, but it's not meant to be overly tactical. It's not meant to be sort of hard use. And, and so they have really, really dialed this in for that purpose. And I think they've done a great, great job. Uh, and so, yeah, I would call this, you know, a nearly perfect everyday carry knife for a number of reasons. And we'll get into some of those reasons as we work our way through the knife, uh, beginning though with size and weight, which is where we want to go first, the way we always do. Uh, this knife is eight and one eighth inches overall. The blade length here is three and nine sixteenths. Handle when closed is four and a half. And in fact, just a teeny bit more than four and a half inches. Uh, it's only 7 16 thick, so under half an inch thick, and it weighs in at only 3.6 ounces. So carrying this around every day, you literally don't even know you have it, and yet you do have a very capable cutting tool. You've got lots of cutting edge here, uh, lots of real estate for your fingers, and that those are things that, you know, you, you know, when you make a knife small and easy to carry, that's great, but it's easy to go too far with that and end up with a knife that's sacrificing some utility. This does not, okay? It's super easy to carry and you literally would never know you have it, uh, but you don't have to sacrifice any uh, comfort in hand or any cutting ability to get that, which I think is a total, total win. All right, the blade on this is M390 steel. You can see the maker's mark there uh, and that very nice mirror stonewash finish. Nicely crowned spine and a bit of jimping here. You can see that they've really kind of balanced that distal taper so that you still get, hold on, there we go. So that you still get a pretty robust tip. And again, that's one of those things where I feel like they've really balanced this well for an EDC knife. This blade is only 130 thousandths thick. It's only 19 thousandths behind the edge. So it slices really, really well. M390 is of course phenomenal steel. And the finish on it even is dialed in to be a, a knife that you can use and don't feel scared, you know, kind of scratching or bumping or anything like that. The only one issue that I will say is there's a bit of a whoops sorry guys <laughs> uh come on there we go you can see there's a bit of a mark there on the tip now it's very small uh almost not noticeable but it is there and they probably just kind of bumped this knife as they were kind of taking it off the sharpening stones or whatever it's a you know for a knife of this price that's a little disappointing but it doesn't impact the the overall look of the knife it certainly doesn't impact the the usefulness of it and so, yeah, in terms of the blade, oh, by the way, let me point out the plunge grind here is perfectly done with a really nice cut sharpening choil there. Uh, so again, just what you'd want. Okay, so they've really, really executed this blade well. Okay, there's no real big complaint that I can come up with in terms of usefulness. I think it's just a total, total win. And Anyway, I could go on more to do to talk more about the blade, but let's just stop by saying it's a great cutting blade. All right. And it's really well balanced in terms of not being so fine and so dainty that you're feeling like you're going to break it. It's definitely a knife that's meant to be used and meant to cut stuff. And it will do that exceptionally well. Moving on to the action. All right, you've got this very, very nice decorative pivot, and there are a number of pivot options on their website. If you go over there, the detent is really, really dialed in. It is nice and drop shetty, smooth as silk, and the detent is just snappy enough, okay? It, oh man, it feels good to flip this knife. And, and uh, let me comment a little bit on that. Well, let me show you first. So it is a 440 stainless lock bar insert. You can see the screw for the lock bar insert right there. 
And right there, if I can do this right, you can see the detent. And notice that it's not a ball, it's a little ramp. Now we need to have a quick discussion about that. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail, but the detent ramp, of course, originated, at, well, Let's say this, Brian Nadeau, I don't know if or he originated the design, but he's certainly the most famous for doing a detent ramp and he does it really well. I think it's a great idea and I would love to see it on more folders, but of course you're gonna want to credit Brian for doing that. And if you check on Holt's website, they do credit Brian. Now there's some discussion here. They may be re-engineering this to move away from the detent ramp so that they're not using someone else's uh, idea. Now, Brian, it's not proprietary. And in fact, he's even said he's not overly concerned about someone using it, uh, but he does want to be credited. And he is. <clears throat> now, from Holt's perspective, uh, they pointed out that when they were working on how to how to execute this knife, how to build it, uh, they came up with a detent ramp and engineered a detent ramp on their own. And they do feel different. Okay. Essentially, I guess the biggest difference is the fact that Holt's ramp is a little... Um, a little steeper than Brian's and therefore the detent is a little snappier than any of the Nidos that I've felt. Not that that's been many. I think I can think of uh, three Nidos that I've flipped in my life and uh, they're a little softer. This is very snappy. It's a little more what you're used to um, and, and really, really perfectly done. Uh, don't know what to exactly say about the re-engineering process other than to say that uh, this is so well done that it'll be a shame if in fixing their their little issue here, they they end up coming out with something that's not as ideal as this because this is really, really good. Um, <clears throat> that's the biggest thing that I wanted to say about the action. Otherwise, I, I'd always like to comment on comfort and this is really nice. They've got uh, the bar, the, the lock bar positioned well so that you can easily access it. And one other thing that I feel like I want to point out, this is something I wish everyone would do. Notice the relief cut. You don't. That's right. Because the way they've done the relief cut is, let me get my hand back here so it focuses, is by putting it in here. So there is a relief cut there, but they don't, they leave the front wall intact, which is really, really nice. This is the best way that I've ever seen this executed. Um, one, that extra material is going to add strength to uh, that weak point in the frame. Two, it makes the knife look way, way nicer. Okay, there's no cut here. There's no cut here. This is really how a how a relief cut should be done. I absolutely love that they've taken the extra time and energy to do that. Uh, that is a huge win. And I know it feels like I'm making a bigger deal out of this than, than maybe I should, but you never see that. And I think this is absolutely the best way to do it. Uh, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about, right? Here's the relief cut on this Kaiser. Uh, here's the relief cut on the Sebenza. Here's the relief cut on the Riot. See, and, and this is going to be a weak point. And so by doing what Holt has done, and that is by really using a hole as the relief cut, you actually add some strength to what is the weakest part of the knife, all right, <clears throat> outside of the actual lock interface. Uh, but you also really improve the look. Okay, so that's <laughs> that's my uh, my take on how they've done that relief cut. It is absolutely perfectly, perfectly done. And I love the way they handled that. Uh, okay, so there's detent. Couple little discussions there. One about the, the detent ramp, which is worth noticing. And then the relief cut, which again is very, very much worth noticing. How about the handle? Well, I should point out that there's variation available on the handle. So you're gonna need to go to really get a full examination of how this handle's done. You need to go over to Holt's website and see the various options because there are different finishes, there are different colors, there are even different patterns available. So I can only speak in a limited way about this. This one, now the overall size is really nice. I get a good full full, full four finger grip on this. It's hand filling enough that I feel confident holding this and using it. There are no hot spots. Uh, now this one happens to be the pattern with the, the cutouts and the nice little milling lines there. And it's really, really attractive. And so is the anodization that Phil chose on this particular knife. I doubt the camera is doing this justice. In person, the, the variation in the purple is absolutely gorgeous. I'm not a huge fan of purple knives, but again, uh, even the slight purple on the 
<clears throat> on the pocket clip is really, really nice. Um, now that's that's more of a testament to their ability at finishing and anodizing this, and it's really, really nice, uh, more than it is uh, to the comfort of the knife, but I just wanted to point that out. In terms of ergos, yeah, it feels great in hand. Now the jimping back here is a little sharper. It's really nice, and it's just slightly, ever so slightly proud of the scales and it's really, really good. If the jimping here was the same as the jimping here, I'd be a little happier. That's about my only criticism here on ergonomics is I'd like to have this jimping a little sharper. As it stands, it doesn't really do a whole lot for me. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, the knife is well built, it's comfortable, and yeah, you probably noticed as you were looking in there, but let's see if I can show you this side. Notice how on this side, they have completely milled out everything in there. And that again is just phenomenal. Really, really love the way that they've done that. So really lightens up the knife, makes it easy to carry and doesn't sacrifice anything in terms of strength. So again, total, total win on construction. Ergonomics is great. Uh, as I say, this knife is a little bit on the small side for me, but everything else is so good that I'm, I'm absolutely happy to, to take it at the size that it is. <clears throat> and of course, I know for a lot of you out there, um, you're gonna like a slightly smaller knife. So this really balances out those of us who like a larger knife, I think this is big enough for us. Those who like a smaller knife, it's small enough to keep them happy as well. So pretty darn good on size. Ergonomics are great, construction is great. Um, <clears throat> little bit of a comment on the clip here. The one little issue I have with the clip is, let's see if I can show you, it is not quite touching. Now, I've tried this in a number of different pants and that's not been a problem. There may be somebody out there wearing pants that are so thin that this wouldn't retain strongly enough, but I kind of doubt it. Like, I've, I've put this into some really thin dress pants and it still works just fine, okay? So that's the only thing I would say. The clip is not touching here, you can hear Right, I can make it click a little bit. Um, now, the other cool thing about this is I've had clips where they're not touching and it's a problem because that ticking happens all the time. The tension on this is enough that outside of me pushing on it pretty hard, it's not a problem. So uh, there's the clip, very, very functional. Not super deep carry, but deep carry enough. And of course, the other point is that it really, really ties in well with the design of the knife. And being flat the way it is, it doesn't create any kind of hot spot, any kind of problem in terms of comfort. It just feels really, really good, okay? So <clears throat> that's uh, handle construction and ergonomics. Let's go ahead and get some comparisons here. Uh, let's see, what have we got? Uh, I'm gonna try, it's hard to find knives that are easily comparable to this. I, I think the Swish is kind of a good one because it has similar, you know, it's similar size. It's a little bigger, but you also have some options. It's, it's similarly well built, all right, and not too, too far off in cost. So there's an Olamic Swish. Uh, let's pull out the F3. Uh, the F3 is in a similar vein to this. This is sort of a, you know, it's a, a uh, limited production knife, you know, in a small shop, uh, sort of custom, semi-custom, however you want to think about it. And so is this, but this runs a little bit cheaper. So the value on this is actually pretty darn good. And that's where I want to bring in the next knife. So here is a Sabenza, or I mean, uh, Chris Reeve Knives in Kosi. And these guys are going to go for about 425. And, you know, <laughs> This is taking, you know, this is taking this and giving you not only the ability to customize it however you want, but giving you some of those modern features like the lock bar insert, the bearing pivot, uh, the heavily milled out titanium, which makes this quite a bit lighter and easier to carry, even though you're getting the same or maybe even a little more cutting edge. And here's the comment I want to really make. Uh, the, the thing I love about the, the Inkosi is just how well built it is and how much it just begs to be used and carried. Well, Holt, likely within 2018, and I've asked him a little bit about this, okay? So I, I wanted to follow up and, and he's been really good to share with me just a little bit about the utility version of this knife that's coming out. The utility version of this knife is, is going to be, you know, just played down a little bit, a little bit plainer, maybe a little more like the Inkosi, 
and yet it's going to be a very, very attractive price point. I think it's going to land around $300. For $300 to get a user version of this knife is mind-blowingly good, guys. Absolutely amazing. Uh, and, and I would be following them for that reason alone. Uh, you know, at 300 bucks to get a, a sort of simplified version of this, I would buy two, all right? That is just too amazing. Uh, let's, let's continue with our comparisons here. Um, you know, this knife costs more than the utility version of this. Now, I like the, the ergonomics on this just a little bit better. And the size of this knife for me is, is more, within my preferences. Of course, being overseas produced, you know, the price is significantly different. One other knife, for those of you who, who you know, want a nice titanium frame lock, but don't, don't want to be quite this large or this costly, uh, the Kaiser T1 is uh, amazingly good uh, for, you know, probably the most impressive Kaiser that I have ever handled. So there you go, guys. Those are some comparisons for you. In conclusion, I have to say, guys, that uh, really, even when I look at the knives that I brought in for comparison, this knife is spectacular. It's lighter than pretty much all of them. It has as much cutting edge. It has a blade that'll cut as well or better than anything else that I've shown you. Uh, the, the detail work is excellent. This is the refined version. And so the options you get with that include a bunch of different pivots, different colors, different grinds. And, and so that gives you tons of variation, uh, something like what you'd get if you were buying one of these. And so this knife is just perfectly, perfectly done. It, it satisfies the, the, the high-end desire for something special while not being so crazily priced. Like consider that, you know, this is, you know, if you bought a Sabenza with inlays, it would cost you considerably more than this knife right? <clears throat> or at least a little bit more. And so what you're getting here for the price is, is absolutely impressive. Okay, uh, I'm. <laughs> it's hard to overstate how good this knife is. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, I would say this is one of the most perfect EDC knives that I have ever handled. Uh, I have to say a huge thank you to Holt for the work and the thoughtfulness that went into this knife. And again, I have to say a huge thank you to Phil, the viewer, uh, for letting me check this knife out because I am absolutely blown away. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will talk to you soon.